Okay. Third topic is apps. Okay. These are the third party apps. These are other other applications that talk to QuickBooks. We're going to recognize the benefits of working with a Intuit approved app, app and then we're going to identify the steps to purchase, test, and access apps through QuickBooks Online. Now, QuickBooks Online ecosystem. Why? Some people say, well, QuickBooks should do this, QuickBooks should do that. Um, QuickBooks is designed to be a core accounting software that gets that core accounting functionality right. It's the operating system of the business. And there's other developers out there that are best in class that can make certain apps that take care of specific sort of micro needs in a very deep way, uh, much deeper than what QuickBooks can do. A perfect example of that is, is T-Sheets. T-Sheets has taken the whole concept of timesheet time management to a real deep level. And Intuit and QuickBooks are not really going to give too much focus on making QuickBooks so functional in those areas and possibly giving up core functionality that would be much more important. So where are all these apps? They're in the App Center apps.com and just remember that the QuickBooks Online ecosystem is powered by the API and the API in essence is the the, the interface that QuickBooks has with uh, developers in terms of in terms of being able to connect seamlessly seamlessly connect and integrate with it okay how do you select apps or when selecting apps what are the best practices one is in apps.com, read all the reviews, research, talk to other pro advisors. In some cases, you can watch videos and webinars that compare and pin, you know, two or three apps against each other. Um, test them, you know, talk to the app developer, ask for a demo, ask for a free trial. Most of them will do it. Most of them will actually do a demonstration. And at the end, you know, look at all the client needs and do what's best for the client. There's many apps that talk to QuickBooks, but the only ones that have been approved to Intuit are the ones that you find in apps.com. So keep that in mind that if apps.com equals Intuit approved apps. Okay, let me check something. Wendy or um, or um, um, or Woody, is there is there a background noise? Somebody saying that there's background noise. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. So if, make sure nobody else, make sure everybody else is muted there. Okay. All right. So sorry about that. All right. Okay. So connecting the apps. So one thing is, if you're logged in through QuickBooks Online Accountant, you you can't connect the apps through there, because you have to be the master administrator, and you have to log in as the master administrator to do so. So just keep that in mind. That that. Um, apps button gets hidden if you're not the uh, the master administrator because this is typically something that the, the accountants I mean the the clients do I mean there are some tips and tricks out there in, in, ter in terms of even if you're logged in as an accountant to add uh, an app but normally just log in as a master admin log in normally and then click on the app center which is that button on the left side let me just show you here so in QuickBooks online on the left navigation bar there's a button that says apps. Once you click on apps, that will take you to the app center. And I'll show you the app center can also be accessed through apps.com. Okay, so in apps.com, you're going to see all these different apps that talk to QuickBooks. As I mentioned, there's over 3,000 of them. Okay, so if you're looking to connect, I don't know, eBay with uh, QuickBooks Online, you would literally just type eBay there. Okay, and it will show you all the apps that can interact with QuickBooks Online and eBay, or or some of them are so, sort of semi-related with eBay, that sort of thing, right? So, um, so that's just kind of one way you can discover apps. And then once you find the app you think you want, you click on that, and then it will take you to the app screen where I can actually click on reviews, and I can read all the reviews. Right, that other these are other users. Other users give reviews on these apps. 
you can see the pricing you can see the support philosophy and and contact information and then i can click on get app now and clicking on get app now will actually connect will create an account on on the app side and it will connect it to your quickbooks online so whatever um, integration will happen right after you connect perfect okay so one thing that we suggest strongly to our uh, fellow accounting professionals is you start thinking about adding apps to the mix here that does complicate the dynamic of the work okay when, when you work with quickbooks solely quickbooks by itself no apps it's typically a lot easier um, than adding an app adding an app sort of throws a wrench to the whole thing so i recommend that you um, have very clear guidelines with your client in terms of who will provide the support for the app if the app gets disconnected who will help you with that um, if there's a if there's a break on the way that the transactions um, are, are coming in or that they're supposed to come in you also want to um, you know make sure that that's all clear you know in your engagement letter and understand your 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 vendors billing policy you know does the client pay does the accounting professional pay and what the support is right so it's just an like important suggestion because apps do kind of throw a wrench into the whole thing okay and all the apps are going to have a buy button or a get app now button or a test app now button um and and that's typically the best way to go about in connecting an app we're on topic four of module three okay um so we're going to go do a demonstration of the reports now Okay, so here, when I click go on the top and on the left navigation bar, I click on reports. I have recommended. These are all my standard reports that most people run. Frequently run would be a report that you run um, often. So if you run um, a PL and balance sheet often, those are going to show up in there. My custom reports will be reports that I save. So we'll talk about those in a second. Management reports are typically uh, report packages that we can create. So we can create a monthly package report that contains three or four sets of reports that we give to, to, to management every month, every week, whatever that frequency is. And then all reports would be the entire database of reports. As we mentioned, 70-something reports with QuickBooks Online Plus. And these are all um, bundled into report groups. So for example, Business Overview is a report group review sales as a report group if i click on any of these it will take me to the list of the reports inside that report group i'm going to go into profit and loss okay is there is there still background noise by the way wendy okay all right i i just moved my microphone <laughs> maybe maybe it wasn't in a good spot before uh, okay so i'm going to go ahead and click on last year hit run report okay let's do last month and run report I'm not sure the sample file has information okay there we go so i can click on collapse it will basically hide all the sub accounts or i can click on expand which will show all the sub accounts so you see here under under landscaping services we have job materials and we have three options there or three accounts on the job materials if I click on collapse, all of those go, go away. If I hit control plus or control minus, or if you're in a Mac, command plus, command minus, I can make the report a little bigger or smaller for display purposes. Okay, kind of useful when, uh, when doing a webinar like this. If I want to have multiple columns here in this report, I go to customize and then I go down to columns. And then I can put by week. And then I click run report. And this will show me every single week profit and loss all next to each other. Now, these are, these are not considered comparatives. For comparatives, it's going to be a little bit different. But these are how we show a report and break up the columns into particular periods. Now, if I do last month again, I'm going to do total only so I won't have it broken down by week. So I'm going to do last month again. And I go down and I go to a sub column for comparison. And I compare it with the previous period. 
and then put percentage change and then I scroll down and click run report it's going to show me my last month's sales compared to April with a percentage change so we can know whether we're in an uptrend or a downtrend and how, or how big that trend is so that that's what the sub column comparison is for which is a little bit different than just a regular column now if I click on any of these reports let me see I'm gonna click on this five thousand dollars there that will take me into a detailed report so we were looking at a summary report notice here it says back to summary and now I'm looking at a detailed report in a detailed report I'm seeing line by line transaction by transaction in a detailed report I can actually choose what data fields I want to see in the columns and the order so for example if I wanted number to be first name to be second and I don't want to see transaction type at all I would go into customize then I would click on change columns again this is a detailed report in which I want to change the order of the columns or which columns I want to see and not see I go to change columns as I mentioned I don't want to see transaction type so I'll remove it I want a number to be first so I change the order to go up then I want name to be second I'll make that go up so now I changed the or I removed a, a column change the order I can also go here and add if I wanted to debits and credits go to add and then I can move these two down I'm gonna put this right there before amount go to credit move this down let's say I don't, I don't need split I'll get rid of that and I hit OK and then scroll down and click on run report again we clicked on customize and then I change columns and then I basically change the order of the columns and what pieces of information I wanted to see in that detailed report now let me run a PL again now by default QuickBooks is going to be on a accrual basis here on the top right you're going to see accrual basis you can actually click on customize report and you can choose whether you want to see it on cash basis or accrual basis okay you can choose whether the items are expanded or collapsed I hit report again and then to print it I'm going to click on the print button here on the top on the top left click on print okay it's going to show me a, a preview of it okay it's going to try to fit everything onto one page uh, wide multiple pages uh, long down here at the bottom it says here headers and footers I can include the header and footer of the printout so what happens is um, QuickBooks Online prints through the browser and sometimes the browser adds a little header or a little footer on the URL <laughs> of the website and sometimes that annoys people so if you wanted to remove that you would remove headers and footers you can also change the margins you know, that, that sort of stuff through here so as you can I don't know if you can see that little line in the bottom of the report that that is sort of a web address okay that really annoys people um, to print it so make sure to understand that uh, printing is a browser setting and you would remove the header and footer through the print browser setting okay those are the important notes about that I mean, I'm still gonna run through the slides just in case there's there's important information about um, about reports there that I may have missed and then we'll go ahead and take the last uh, 10 minute break and we'll do the last two sections which are actually pretty fast okay so for reporting as we mentioned before only you're only gonna get simple reports and simple start on basic financial statements and accounts receivable you're gonna get a little bit more reports in essentials especially because you can get reports on accounts payable on bills and purchases and on accounts uh, on QuickBooks Online Plus you're gonna get reports like budget versus actual you're gonna get those report only users you're gonna get inventory reports you get sales by class sales by location all the things that are available only in um, in QuickBooks Online Plus okay 
Now, as we mentioned in the report center, we have all these report tabs. The reports uh, are grouped into report groups based on the category, sales reports, financial reports, sales tax reports, and so forth. Accountants, accountants only have access to four special reports. Uh, tri adjusted trial balance, adjusting journal entries, profit and loss comparison, and balance sheet comparison. Those uh, canned reports are only available to accountants right off the bat. Management reports, as we mentioned earlier, they're used to create report bundles that can have a cover page, can have additional notes, and, and they're really, really good to, um, to give um, your clients deliverables. So we mentioned we add the sub columns for comparison and we click on customize columns to add and remove the columns that we want to see. Now, if I want to customize a report and save it, that way I don't have to run the filters or run the columns or the comparatives again. That way when I pull it, I want it to come up with all the customizations. I would click on save customizations, which basically is going to put it into that customize report section. As I mentioned, if you want to get rid of that URL in the, in the bottom, when you print, make sure you turn off the header and footer, which is a browser setting. 